Hello, B here, and welcome back to Biology. We're starting a brand new unit today on biodiversity. We talked about what that word meant way back in unit one, but let's see if you remember. The prefix bio always means having to do with living things. We've looked at several major themes of biology at this point in the course, including structure and function, the stability of organisms, reproduction and inheritance, and evolution. We are working towards that last theme, interdependence of organisms. But before we can see how they are interdependent, we need to study the diversity that exists within organisms. Diversity means variety or different forms. So in this unit and the next, we'll be looking at all the different types of living things in the world. Biodiversity. Today, we'll take a quick look at the different kingdoms that represent the vast amount of biodiversity on Earth. But before we get started, let's look at our goals for this lesson. By the end, you'll be able to describe the structure of domains and kingdoms, give examples of organisms in each of the six kingdoms of life. actually going to start this lesson a few years in the past, the 1980s to be exact. Your parents or grandparents might have been learning biology at that time. If so, they would likely have seen a diagram like this, showing five kingdoms of living things. Protista, fungi, animalia, plantae, and monera. But scientists didn't yet know too much about monera, which included all of the living things made of prokaryotic cells. As they learned more, they realized that the Monera kingdom was so large and so incredibly diverse that it not only needed two different kingdoms, they needed to add a whole other level to the organization of living things. From your lesson on taxonomy in the previous unit, do you remember what the highest level of classification is? Domain. The domain level was added to our taxonomic system in 1990. We now group living things into three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. The bacteria and archaea domains consist of only single-celled prokaryotic organisms. Do you remember from our unit on cells the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes? Prokaryotes are made of prokaryotic cells, which are small and simple. Eukaryotic cells are larger and contain complex organelles. You may not have guessed that two out of the three domains would be occupied by these small, simple creatures, but there is more biodiversity in these domains than you may realize. The bacteria and archaea domains each only have one kingdom, which shares the name of the domain. I know, not very creative, right? but they will be the focus of our next two lessons in this unit. The eukarya domain is home to most of the life you are more familiar with and has four kingdoms, protists, fungi, plants, and animals. All of these organisms are made of the more complex eukaryotic cells that you hopefully remember learning about in the cells unit. So that gives us a total of six kingdoms of living things spread across three domains. At least that's the biodiversity map that exists today. As we've seen, the taxonomic hierarchy is an ever evolving setup that can be continually updated and rearranged as we learn more about life on Earth. As we go through the unit, we'll study each domain and kingdom in detail, but I'll give you a quick preview of some of the interesting types of organisms you're going to encounter along the way. In the bacteria kingdom, we'll look at a species that attach to the roots of plants deep underground and provide an invaluable service for not only the plant, but all living things. These bacteria, known as nitrogen fixers, convert atmospheric nitrogen into the type of nitrogen that our bodies can use to make protein. 
In the Archaea kingdom, we'll look at thermophiles, such as the sophalibus, which can be found in many of the hydrothermal springs and volcanoes at Yellowstone National Park. Archaea are known for being able to survive temperatures well above the boiling point of water, so these seemingly inhospitable locations are home sweet home to them. Once in the Eukarya domain, we'll start with protists. Most of these organisms are single-celled but still manage to achieve a staggering amount of diversity. For example, look at the variety of shapes made by these diatoms, plant-like protists that can do photosynthesis. Their cell walls are made of silicon dioxide, a compound often used to make glass. It has been said then that they live in glass houses. Our next kingdom is a real hoot, an actual fun guy. <laughs> Sorry, that joke never gets old. The type of fungi you are probably most familiar with is mushrooms. While many mushrooms are brown or white, the mushroom humans have shown the most fascination with is the bright red fly agaric. Several cultures have attempted, mostly unsuccessfully, to use the red and white toadstool for medicinal or ritualistic purposes. It is known to cause severe hallucinations and a trance-like state if eaten. It is also poisonous in all but the most minute doses and carefully prepared extracts, so this is one you'll want to simply enjoy from a distance if you see it on the forest floor. This brings us to the plant kingdom. You almost certainly see a wide variety of plants around you every day and depend on them for many of the nutrients your body needs, as well as the oxygen you breathe. One plant you are hopefully not exposed to regularly is the infamous corpse flower. It produces a stench that mimics rotting flesh to attract flies and beetles and can grow as tall as eight feet. Other plants, such as the Venus flytrap, can eat bugs alive. The plant world is full of creative adaptations. The last kingdom we'll look at is the one you are most familiar with because it's the one that includes you. Humans are part of the animal kingdom, as well as birds, fish, insects, and many others that we'll explore in more detail. The animal kingdom will be the focus of an entire unit, so we'll just begin to look at some basic characteristics of animals in this unit. The amount of biodiversity in the world is so large that we could spend an entire course talking about it and still not scratch the surface of all that exists. As we go through this unit, we'll look at a few of the interesting examples from each kingdom. But remember that there is more life out there than any of us will ever be able to learn about in detail. As you watch the lesson videos, don't forget to read and complete the lesson PDF. You'll need the information found in these to successfully complete the lesson assessments. The PDF for all of this unit is attached to this lesson. And as always, you can find individual lesson PDFs after the corresponding video. Go ahead and download or print it out now though, so you've got it ready. Next time, we'll start our biodiversity journey by looking at the bacteria kingdom. Until then, remember that biology isn't just science, it's the way of life. Hey, hey. See you next time.